So the general rule on when it's safe to use the ripping fence versus the miter gauge is how your wood is oriented and how it is in relationship to the fence. The ripping fence is designed for ripping, which is cutting with the grain of wood. And most of our pine has wood that goes in the length of the, uh, the long strips of wood. Plywood is multiple layers of pine or other material. The grain is alternating. This grain goes this way, the next la layer goes this way. It's a, the layers are all perpendicular. It gives, it's the, it gives it the strength. Whereas ripping doesn't apply to plywood because the grain is always going to be ripping one direction and cross-cutting in another, we start to think about the size and shape of the wood. This, uh, the wood oriented this way is like a ripping action in solid lumber, so I'm gonna consider it ripping, and I will use the ripping fence. When I turn the wood 90 degrees, I'm now doing a cross-cutting action similar to what I would be using with the radial arm saw or the miter saw, so I will want to use the miter gauge. The general rule is that if this distance, almost two feet, is more than twice this distance, four and a half inches, then I need to use the miter gauge. If it's under two to one, then I still can use the ripping fence. The reason I can't use the ripping fence for this process to cut this off, if my mark was here, is because it's too easy for this board to shift this way or shift this way and the minute it shifts like that, it's going to come kicking and flying back up at me, and that is what we don't want to do. That's dangerous. I need to keep it stable and, in, and perpendicular to one of these T-slots uh, instead. So what I will do is we will put the uh, miter gauge in the slot. If there's any dust or dirt in the slot, you want to... Just run it back and forth a few times to clear that out. There's a lot of dust that builds up in there, especially when they aren't in use. We are going to hold the lumber into the fence like that. I can have three or four hand options here. One is to hold the red handle here and to hold the lumber there. Or I can do both hands on the lumber like that. But what I can't do is not hold the lumber. If I don't hold the lumber, then it, then it moves back and forth. The whole point of holding the lumber like this is that I am compressing it and keeping it here so it doesn't shift left and right at all. And I can do that this way as well. And that might be easier for the angle on this cut. So if I'm lining up to a line, which I'm not at the moment, but let's say I was, I would bring that line up, shift my wood left or right, get it exactly where I want, slide it back slightly so it's not touching the blade, close down the, uh, the guard, turn the saw on, and then Push through and push all the way past the blade. We want to push all the way past the blade with it because the, 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 saw, um, uh, the saw blade is still spinning down as we're uh, adjusting stuff and we need to get past um, this point right here when we push it through. What you don't want to do with the miter gauge is then you don't want to back up because as I'm backing up, A, I got caught by the anti-kickback pawls, which they're doing their job, that's a good thing. But it also can cause the wood to shift a little bit or shift into the blade, and then as I'm backing up, it's gonna come back and come flying at me. The same thing with this cutoff piece, I don't wanna touch that. I don't wanna push that through with my hands because I'm more than likely going to push that into the blade and cause it to come flying up. And I just want to let it, let it go. And then when the saw stops, I can reach in and pull the wood out. 
With the guard lifted and the saw turned off, line up the lumber with the blade. The example in the photo does not have a pencil mark to line up to, but shows the action of doing so. Back the lumber away from the blade. Make sure your lumber does not shift while moving back. Lower the guard. You may now power up the machine and make your cut. Push the lumber forward with the miter gauge, holding the lumber tight to the miter gauge the entire time. Do not push, touch, guide, or nudge the cutoff piece while the blade is in motion. Let it stay where it stops after the cut has been made. Do pay attention to it just in case the blade kicks it back at you. Do not stop the wood in the middle of the blade. Always push the wood past the blade. If you stop here, the wood has been cut, but the blade is still spinning. This creates a kickback danger. Make sure the miter gauge and the lumber push past the spinning blade. Keep the guard down for the entire cut. Do not back up the lumber while the blade is spinning. Now on this piece, I've marked my wood with a pencil line. So I want to line that up to the blade. I'm going to adjust this, come right up to the blade. I'm gonna shift it left and right until the pencil mark is lined up right up with the side of those teeth. And then I'm going to back it up, but I need to hold it in place so that it doesn't shift left and right. Back it up, well, so now it's not touching the blade. Bring the fence down, the guard down. And again, my second hand hold option here on the red knob and holding this in place. Again, I've got to grip it real tight so it can't wander. And again, I cut past the blade. Always wait for the saw to come to a complete stop before reaching in and grabbing your lumber. And then bring this back. So now we're going to adjust the miter gauge here. You notice the miter gauge has all these different uh, degrees on it. So we can adjust this. If we look on the back side, there's a, knot, a lever here that pulls out. You can see that. That helps us come back to these preset positions. One for 45, one for zero, and one for the other 45. This doesn't do anything other than pull out. It doesn't twist and turn. It just pulls out like that. This knob loosens up counterclockwise. And if I loosen that up, this, this push button will cause me to stop at exactly zero degrees, which I will want to come back to regularly, so that's a good thing to have. If I want to go past that, I need to pull it out, and then I can stop at 15 degrees or wherever I want, whatever angle I need. And then I tighten that down. So now we're going to do the same task cutting a slight angle or a miter cut. We'll take one of these thinner pieces of wood. Again, the same purpose. If I wanted to cut to this position right there, to that mark, I would line up to that mark. I'd adjust my wood. I'd back up. Bring the, miter, uh, the guard down. Now when I'm at a slight angle, sometimes the wood will want to push the, the guard away. So if I want to avoid that, I'll lift up and move myself forward. So I'm underneath the guard, but not touching the blade because I never want to be touching the blade when I start. And then I just go forward. And again, I do not reach in and grab that until the saw has come to a complete stop. Now I can get it. And there are my two angle cuts, my two miter cuts. Voila.